Morning. Morning. Hello, Manti. Good afternoon, I guess. How are you? I'm very well, Rohit. How are things in San Francisco? Oh, fantastic. Very good. It's the perfect kind of day for Pan Parag if I ate Pan Parag. And <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, that's my weak attempt at a segue into what we'll be talking about today, which is an old Indian classic, uh, the Pan Parag ad featuring Shammi Kapoor. So without further ado, let me actually just play it and, you know, we'll observe a minute's silence or so while we hear uh, the ad. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, right. So that, that brings back memory because that, that's an ad from the 80s, Rohit. Right, uh, that's yeah. an ad from the 80s. So just in case, obviously, there will be people who will be listening on to this who um, may not uh, be familiar with that ad. Um, so Panparag, I guess everybody's familiar with. It's a mouth freshener. I think some people accuse it being of a tobacco-based product, but I'm not really sure. But that's not what we're talking about today. Right. So this ad is set with Shami Kapoor and Ashok Kumar. Uh, two people who have never actually been on a movie together, right? Right. And uh, th- again, that's kind of the trivia that uh, sits around this ad. And uh, Ashok Kumar and uh, one uh, his wife in the ad is on the daughter's side. Shami Kapoor and his wife is the son's, the, the groom's side. They've come to finalize the last minute arrangements. And the whole ad pivots on the one phrase that men humne to ek baat bolna bhuli hai and that is and there's a deadly silence there because at that point they think right at the 11th hour there's going to be a demand for dowry which mm. is something that uh, you know everybody was talking about and still do and then it kind of uh, goes the other way to say that no 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 we are not after dowry all we want to do is ensure that everybody's welcome with pan parag and everything's happy so that's that's the ad but what, it was one of the first ads i don't know what your recollection of it is rohit but it was one of the first ads which actually tried to talk about something that was you know sli- slightly socially contentious you know it was right. it was it was a difficult think about it you know this is just after the asian games and we've talked about apughar some episodes ago so that's the kind of space that we are dealing with and uh, people talking about dowry and panparag so what do you think about this right you know it's very interesting that <clears throat> so yeah, uh, now that you you mentioned it i had never looked at it that way but yes you know in its own way it was trying to make uh, what at that time was a progressive remark which is that uh, you know, I suppose it's, 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 you know, I don't know, maybe it's more humane if you die of oral cancer than of, uh, you know, a dowry death. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's also that it's interesting that Pan Parag itself was not coded as a kind of dangerous product then, that that consciousness came very late, much later. Uh, yep. This, after all, is the era when you also had ads for cigarettes, uh, you know, fairly, fairly openly. Uh, but yes, this this uh, particular moment when, um, you know, I think we are, India is still grappling with this sort of notion of modernity. And there's a very, there's an acute self-consciousness that I think the Indian elites and Indian middle classes had about not being seen as backward and practices like Sati, you remember the Roop Kanwar case, yes, Dowry, yes. these were seen as backward practices. Uh, and I think in its own way, it was, you know, a, a progressive step. Uh, you know, we've I would actually say that in some ways we've taken a step backwards where in the name of uh, a kind of return to tradition uh, and a jingoistic nationalism, we now seem to endorse some of the most uh, regressive practices. Uh, yeah. So if, if there was like, if this ad was happening now and it had to call out um, uh, some bad practices this kind of romeo hunting brigades that we've got uh, what's the thing that's going on in up at the moment where people who right right a man a man and a woman so maybe panpara can take on something like that as a campaign that kyu bekar kyu bother kar rahe inko aap panpara le lijiye i think that something would be like that. i think that would be fantastic right that you know just focus on panpara and you know panpara now is condemned as a product that's uh, you know uh, 
is carcinogenic and can cause cancer. Uh, I believe was it Pierce Brosnan? Pierce Brosnan was kind of tricked into doing an ad for Pan Parag, no? Poor no, not not for Pan Parag. He was for Rajni Gandha Pan Masala. Ah, uh, okay. So it's sorry, it's a, it's the same product, different brand. Uh, Correct. But, you know, poor chap, his, uh, he got conned very badly and his agent afterwards, he realized that his agent had been told that it's a mouth freshener, which again tells us something about... <laughs> which, which, which in theory, Brilliant. you know, it, it, it is it is okay, but it's a very loose definition of a mouth freshener. Ha, like it is, you know, that it, it is total like Indian, like you can just, you can just imagine, you know, the agent is someone who works within Western frameworks. Now, Western frameworks, everything is very clear. Like, you know, uh-huh. contractual, spell it out. So, is it a mouth freshener? Yes, it's a mouth freshener. It's a little bit like a cigarette, like a mouth freshener. Hai na. And, you know, just, you just remember, you just can imagine that Indian, you know, vagueness, equivocation. Uh, uh, I, you know, it's yeah. a very good scenario you raise, Rohit. You imagine this meeting. So, Pierce Brosnan's agent is sitting. He's saying that, you know, so what's this product? It's Rajni Gandha. What does that mean? It's named after a flower. Aha, uh-huh, okay. And, and, and what, what does it do? It freshens. <laughs> ah, okay. And what, what does, does it freshen? freshen? Uh, mouth freshener, sir. <laughs> it is freshens mouth, therefore it is mouth freshener, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, somebody, some technical guy from uh, nearby, and nearby technical people, generally you'll find in these kind of global meetings in India, there'll be some flunky from Singapore or Hong Kong, right, mm. who is well-versed. Mm. In, in so he knows is it but one objection sir this is carcinogenic hmm. no 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 sir it's mouth cancer no, no all of that is false it's flower it's rajni gandha hmm. they bring the focus to rajni gandha yeah and take it. the one thing i wanted to mention about this ad rohit is if you look at it closely <coughs> yeah. looking at it behind shami kapoor and uh, ashok kumar in the setting uh, there is a white marble statue isn't it the Venus de Milo? It probably is. What or Venus de Milo? I don't know what. I don't know my well, Italian. What, yeah. What perplexes me is clearly this is a North Indian wedding. Completely, right? completely. Where, where, uh, where? One of the things that's being talked about or being ruled out category categorically is the exchange of dowry, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Now, cut to, and this is happening in the early eighties. Cut into this, the set designer for this mm-hmm. ad. What would have, because he's trying to replicate reality, right? Mm. The closest fit. What would make him throw in a Roman, a Greco Roman marble statue in the background? So, be, 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 it's, it's, it's an odd one because, you right, know, right, if right. there was this, uh, Ganesh ji, uh, you know, some, uh, or, or something tastefully, some tasteful right, right. Indian I mean, art. You know, they can be like a Hussein, they can be a, you know, Raza painting, they can be a Jamini Roy. You know, or sort of ethnic chic like Bastar, Varli, etc. No, yeah. so this is, I think this is an element of what, you know, the, the writer and architect Gautam Bhatia has called Punjabi Baroque. Right. Uh, you know, if you lived or visited <laughs> Delhi in the 80s, and I, you know, I mean, my family, you know, my mom's side of the family is you know, sort of classic, you know, partition story and so on. But, uh, you know, mercifully, we didn't have, you know, we... I think in the extended family, there are some relatives with gold taps and that kind of stuff. But yeah. I, I lived in Delhi in, in the sort of, you know, refugee made good areas of trans Jamuna or Jamuna Par. And I remember in the 80s seeing a lot of these Punjabis who had made good and they were very hardworking, enterprising people. They would build what were called kothis and right. marble for Punjabis. Marble is the is absolutely the highest embodiment of class. And That's what right. would happen is that you'd have a marble slab outside the gate, outside the colony, in the colony, outside yeah. the kothi, and the marble slab would have gold lettering, and you'd have names like you know Rahejas, Kukrejas, Mutrejas, Malotras, and there would always be an apostrophe. Right, and right. the same families would also buy. They would also buy like this is the era of the Maruti car, so there would be a Maruti with some silver stripes at the back, and again there would be that sort of pointless apostrophe like it's Rahejas. So right. IT without S without apostrophe and Rahejas, like it belongs to one Raheja. So, you know, this is, but I also think there's an element of pan Indianness to this because I remember some years ago visiting a colleague of my father's, there was some kind of like office get together uh, after my dad had retired. Uh, and, you know, this was in Lokhandwala and the, the entry of the building and this Lokhandwala is supposed to be, you know, or maybe it was in Pawai, Hiranandani complex, Pawai, I think. So it's, these are supposed to be like, you know, super posh, and they're the answer to snobbish South Bombay, right? right. So the lobby of that building, uh, as it's called, the entrance of foyer or whatever you want to call it, 
there was this bizarre scene from like Greek mythology, which was completely, you know, it was completely a sort of mishmash of different themes. There was some kind of, you know, Diana the Huntress with a bow and arrow, you know, killing some mythical beast, which was a unicorn from the lady and the unicorn. But Diana also had elements of, you know, silk smitha and, you know, uh, so it was just complete and this uh, and there was a sort of very gaudy over the top fountain and this passed for like you know sheer class and sophistication i think two other things jump to mind uh, in this context one is in the marutis that you mentioned there would be a tissue dispenser absolutely with a very ornate box so right. the tissue would be this is an ornate box uh, Obviously, they, if it was a maruti of any good standard, there'd be some kind of mouth freshener in it to freshen the mouth. Uh, and the as you, you drew the attention to, you know, the stickered message at the back. Mm. Sometimes it would be religious, like Jai Matadi. Sometimes it would be a declaration of love, like Papu loves Minu, mm. right? But that 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 would be the kids' cars, mm. right? Not the family's cars. Um, but you're so right that, you know, uh, sometimes when these uh, building projects happen, uh, there is at the gate, lions, mm-hmm. elephants. Correct, you know, yeah. A lo- lot of, uh, I- I'm yet to see a whale or something very large, but, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the idea of scale and regal mm-hmm. uh, is something that people are obsessed with. So maybe this marble statue in the background of a Panparagad in the 80s, calling for an anti-dowry message wasn't so out of place because you know obviously the i guess what they're trying to signal is if dowry had to exchange hands here in this context it would be a substantial amount of money right right and you know also that these are people it's sort of the wealthy elites who are going to uh, you know it's the responsibility maybe lies on them uh, right. the people who have the money of you know uh, to, to purchase these very expensive objects of art and all they should kind of uh, set the tone uh, for uh, you know, for, for others. And I wonder if in some ways this is also the precursor of the, you know, happy Hindu family. Like you see ads now, you'll have what's supposed to be a middle class family, but the house they live in is sort of fantastic, right? With Dadaji and, you know, the dad and the mom and there are pujas and there are bajaj scooters or, you know, luck soaps or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But but I think part of the whole kind of uh, uh, myth myth making is signaling to people that uh, by certain types of consumption you can get to certain types of life right. yeah and, and that's true in any context over here in the uk i'm sure in the us you yeah. know happiness as advertised by mad men is, yeah. is something uh, so that's why i find these uh, slots that we do on advertisement from different parts of the timeline um, in our country uh, very interesting i, I think yeah. we, we've kind of nearly done this one right right uh, and you know i mean you just absolutely we're, we're wrapping up i just want to share one thought if i may which is that you're yeah. you're you've hit the nail on the head and you know maybe uh, this ad was, you know, ahead of its times in terms of research. I mean, who knows? We might find that, you know, Aristotle actually did enjoy some Greek version of pan masala. So <laughs> it's possible, right? Uh, Plato, possible, yes. Plato yes. pan masala. Yeah, okay. Plato yeah. pan masala. You know, so we've been thinking of one of the things that comes up are these different products that we would like to sell when we form, you know, one of our many companies down the line. So I think along with Zalim Whiskey, we, we definitely want to do a Kickstarter for Plato pan masala. Okay. Plato, Plato mouth freshener. Plato mouth freshener. That's it, right? Rajni Gandha flavored, okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, so on that Chalo, note, let's care. call it a day, man. Take care. Take bye. Care. Bye-bye.